The cost of IT in business can be staggering. From hardware and software expenses to services like internet and phone, you don't need to spend a fortune on IT to succeed. If your organization spends more than $500 monthly on any service, or you're considering signing a long-term contract, IT Enabled can help you manage your technology and minimize your costs. Contact us today to schedule a free consultation. IT Enabled, we're here to help. Hi, I'm Tara Watson Watkins, President and CEO of the Lufkin Angelina County Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to the Connect Podcast, connecting business to the community. I'm here today with my co-host, Blake Polino with BP Media Group. So welcome back. Since the month of May is Mental Health Awareness Month, we wanted to take a few episodes and share some of the mental health resources that we have right here in Angelina County. So we're going to start things off this week with Elena Culpepper of Ocean's Behavioral Hospital of Lufkin to share everything that they do to help those who are in mental health crisis here in Angelina County. So let's get into that episode now. Well, we are thrilled to have my good friend, Alana Culpepper. Alana is with Ocean's Behavioral Hospital in Lufkin. Uh, she's the Community Education Director. Yes. So glad to have you here. Thank you, Tara. Thanks for being on it. Of course. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, okay. um, and then we'll talk about Ocean's Behavioral and what all it does. Yeah, um, I am born and raised in Nacogdoches, Texas, uh, to the my parents are the late Gil and Walter Culpepper. Um, I got into mental health uh, eight years, almost eight years ago. Okay. My mom following in my mother's footsteps. She did this for almost 40 plus years through the Burke um, and got me into it about three years before she passed. And now I'm eat, leave, eat, live, breathe. I do it all. I love it. Yeah. Um, I'm very passionate about helping those who suffer from mental illness. I feel like they just don't have a voice and they deserve a voice. Um, so from that, I have also birthed a new uh, nonprofit that's getting ready to start called The Safe Place. And it's going to be housed in Nacogdoches. But we're doing a suicide awareness walk in September to honor those lives. And it's just I am all in for it. I love it. Cool. Um, we all in some sort of some sort of fashion have suffered with some type of depression or you know anxiety or something of that nature so depression mental illness has no look and I'm here to break the stigma and let people know it's really okay to not be okay yeah I think that's so important and, you know so many people I think I think well I, I can't have that you know that that's not for me uh, and it's okay to need help correct Absolutely. Correct. So why don't you tell us a little bit about um, Ocean's Behavioral? Right. So we are a 24-bed inpatient facility um, here in Lufkin, and we also have an outpatient facility um, on Chestnut Village. So we uh, take people who are in current crisis, whether that be, you know, suicidal, homicidal, psychosis, uh, people who are suffering with dementia. Of course, there's no cure for dementia, and we don't <laughs> treat dementia we treat the behaviors that are associated with dementia. Mm -hmm. um, and so we put them in our hospital facility. Typical stay is anywhere from seven to 10 days or longer if needed. Um, and we help them by doing medication adjustment. We do therapy, counseling, all of that, trying to give them coping mechanisms to get back into society to where they need to function. Right. Um, and so we have great success stories and we follow them down. We step them down to our outpatient facility, which um, is again, Chestnut Village. And it's an intensive outpatient program where they go, they can go three to four times a week and do group therapy, intense group therapy, individual if needed. Um, and that's our adults during the day. In the afternoon, we have started an adolescent track Nice. Starting from about 3.30 or 4 and goes to about 7.30 um, for adolescents 13 to 17. Interesting. Yeah. So mental health has been, obviously, since COVID, a huge, huge, Oh, man, huge, it's huge skyrocketed. Yeah. I can't tell you the amount of people, professionals, that have uh, PTSD from yeah. COVID. Sure. Um, just, you know, the aftermath of it and even... I'll tell you, I've, we've had to go on jobs and, and get people because I can't take this anymore. Wow. So it is, it has skyrocketed mental illness like yeah. no other. Mm -hmm. I think I was kind of of the opinion, even before COVID, and I think us being at home and um, I think therapy becoming available 
uh, more widespread online. You know, when you could meet with a therapist online in Zoom and COVID kind of forced our hands on that where we weren't really doing a lot of that previous, even though right. we probably should have. Right. Um, it really opened it up. But I think even before that, we might have had a little bit of a, a mental health crisis. Oh, um, we did. And yeah. we just masked it well. Yeah. Um, Tara knows I'm a firm believer in the Lord. And I'll tell people, Christians are the heart. We play Halloween 365 because we wear this mask yeah. that Interesting. we are okay. Right. And underneath, we go home and we're crying and we're yeah. sad and we're alone. And that is what I'm doing to break the stigma. I'm trying to break the stigma. It's okay mm -hmm. to need help. It's okay to have Jesus and a therapist, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's okay to cry. It's, o it's okay to not be okay. And I think that our society and the world that we live in has made it to where we feel like it's not okay. Yeah. Right. Um, but now we have seen a uptick in suicides. Yeah. Uh, we've seen an uptick in uh, people that are just, they're done. They've checked out. And it don't matter who they are. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, we're done. But that's what we're here for is to bring hope, to shed light, to say, you are not alone. Somebody's here with you. Yeah. But yeah, COVID has definitely put a yeah. highlight, you know, like a magnifying like glass. A magnifying glass yeah. And it's just like, yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just in Nacogdoches alone in the last two weeks, we've had two suicides. Wow. I mean, of prominent people. And it's just, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's something I, I've become more and more passionate about um, over the years. I, I read a statistic one time um, that just, I mean, absolutely rocked my world. Um, it said for adult males um, in my demographic, the person most likely to kill me is myself. That's right. And that's I crazy. Was like, I read that and I was like, yeah. holy cow. Like, yeah. That's oh, absolutely. Absolutely insane. Absolutely. I mean, so like we put all of this talk into, you know, gun control and I'm not saying we don't need our cancer research or um, heart disease and all these other things. It's like the number one killer of, of me is me. <laughs> like that's a scary, scary mm -hmm. statistic. But I feel like a lot of times we don't have a ton of resources um, right. out there for that. Well, and I think that we do, but we don't know that we do. Yes, absolutely. That's the problem. And that's yeah. where, you know, safe place is coming into play. Um, what I've developed and my committee has developed is it's not like a, you know, a hospital or anything like that, but it's a place where people can go to feel safe. That's right. Yeah. Um, and to provide those resources. So there's resources there. Mm -hmm. I feel like in the society that we live in, in the community, they're just not highlighted Absol enough. Absolutely right. So there are they they're there. Yeah. Um, it's do we want to use them? Yeah. And absolutely. it's a mind mentality. You know, I tell people all the time the mind is a battlefield. Mm -hmm. And we have, especially like you just said, men mm -hmm. that alpha male and some alpha females, yeah. we feel like, oh, that can't be me. So absolutely we right. just we just don't. We just yeah. mask it and on the inside we're dying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'll, I'll be the first to say, and Tara knows me very well. I mean, I've been through a lot. Like, I've lost mm -hmm. my entire immediate family in a short amount of time. So, and I'm the only one left, right? And that after I lost my mom, I, I went through it. I'm like, I can imagine. I'm working in mental health and I may need somebody, yeah. you know? Right. But it comes a point where you have to be okay to accept the help. And I think that's the point where people feel like, oh, if I go get help, then I'm labeled, right? you know, as crazy and it has nothing to do with that uh -huh. it's called life yeah and god is real good but life can suck sometimes yeah that's it true can. it will just <laughs> yeah. man it will suck you dry and yeah yeah you do feel like you're hopeless and worthless and have nothing else to live for sure but there are resources available that's for so sure let's, let's talk about those resources when when someone is clinically depressed mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, we say mental illness and, you know, we think of all levels of mental illness. Correct. So what what opportunities are there for them to have? So locally, and let's just talk about Lufkin right now, mm -hmm. you have the Burke Center, which is our local mental health authority. Um, they have a crisis hotline 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. um, they have the clinic that you can walk in and say, hey, I, something's wrong. I need to be seen. And you can get what they call an emergency assessment. Um, Oceans is here. You know, yes, our inpatient is 45 and older. But call us. If you're younger than that, we know people. We have That's connections right. that yeah. you can go to um, that you can go get help. Our output, We can start you. You know, I think in this area, people think that we don't have psychiatrists. And they're right. We don't. We have one in the Nacogdoches area. But 
There's telepsychiatry that you can jump on. There are so many resources that are out there. And that's what we're going to do is bring them to light so that they can know, yeah, there's resources there right. for sure. So just it's the matter of picking up the phone. I gave a room full of 200 social workers my cell phone number. It's like, y'all don't know where to go. Y'all call me. That's yeah. right. Because I want to be that source. So when people say I'm struggling with mental illness, oh, there's a girl at Oceans that said I could call her. That's uh -huh. right. Call me. Yeah, I want to yeah. be there to help you every step of the way for sure yeah so it's just i think it's just that main person that can yeah. say where do i go yeah you know what i'm saying um where can i go where can i turn who can i call call us we'll get you in the right direction mm -hmm. the right hook you up with the right people mm -hmm. so what it's about for sure yeah is there is there a need for more professional help in in our area Absolutely. Yeah. Um, just like I, there's only literally one psychiatrist left in Nacogdoches who is completely overwhelmed. Yeah, that um, seems that seems just absolutely crazy. To right. Me. Right. But one psychiatrist serving sixty thousand people. Correct. Right? And he's overwhelmed, and you know the wait list is long. Um, he's gonna need his own help. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, and I tell people all the time. I'm like, everybody bring. You know, when you deal with mental health, people will. Come take it on and take it oh, on I and i'm imagine. one of those people yeah and i'm like i'm gonna be that person for everybody right. I'm like whoa let me yeah stop yeah and, and then angelina and really county there's only a handful right that's right a, a, a couple handful. yeah i don't even think there's not one psychiatrist but there are several psychologists psychologists yeah. right. there's several therapists but we don't right. have a psychiatrist there psychiatrist. is no psychiatrist it's and so isn't that interesting yeah um so a lot of people you know they can do online telepsychiatry mm -hmm. um I'll tell people the quickest way, honestly, to see some type of psychiatrist is through our out, you know, our outpatient program. We're gonna put you in front of a doctor within a week, okay. um, and you know, trying to wait on one could be six months or more. Yeah, the wait list is. Crazy. It makes it it makes it hard to be proactive about because if you reach an emergency situation, obviously there are resources, right? Like right, you there's guys and like Burke and, and like that. And if all else fails, go to the emergency room. Right. That yeah. is what they're there for. Right. You know, I made fun of them last week when I was there. I was like, y'all do not want me to work <coughs> in dispatch or in triage because I'm like, take your broke toe and go to your PCP mm -hmm. on Monday. <laughs> oh, like yeah. the emergency room is for the emergency <laughs> room, right? So, yeah. but in crisis situations, when you feel like, oh, I feel like I may be Something ain't right. Yeah. Go to the emergency room. Yeah. They call us. We go out. We do evaluations. And we can help, you know, get you through that crisis for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's, they're there. It's interesting. Yeah. So so trying to be proactive about it. So if you want to go talk to somebody or I mean, that's difficult to do when right. there's not a lot of Resources. professionals in yes. the area. But thankfully, there's a lot of online things. So there's like lots of online, yeah. you know, and there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people choose to do online, honestly, because maybe we're well connected in this area and we don't want people to know, That's even right. though we're all under HIPAA, you know, it's still just, sure. again, that makes pride. You feel better. It makes you feel better sure. if you can go and talk to somebody that don't know you. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? You get an that outside helps. opinion. So yeah. that, you know, online is booming and it's great resource, but some people still want that face-to-face -face physical contact. Yeah. And it's understandable. Interesting. I'd love to hear your opinion on the rise of this mental health. I, I think a lot of people stigmatize it in saying that, you know, we're over-diagnosing and mm -hmm. over-prescribing, but there's definitely an increase in it. Is, is it come from awareness? Like more people are just aware? I think more people are aware. More people mm -hmm. are seeing it. And I think, again, it was caused truly by the pandemic mm -hmm. because we had to be with ourselves sure and our loved ones had to be with us right sure. so we're all stuck at home nobody could go anywhere unless you were an emergency personnel which thank god i was so i was out and about in it and yeah you know on the front line but a lot of us had to be at home give us some time to think about give ourselves us some time <laughs> to think about ourselves and we're like i don't like myself yeah wow and Tara just said it. I don't like myself, so uh -huh. how can you expect other people to like you That's if you right. don't like yeah, yourself? And sure. then it, it starts weighing on our minds, right? Like, Well, and I think so many people I? realized, I really don't like my job. Yeah. Like, I go to this job day in and day out, but I really don't like this, and now I'm home, and what can I do to change? Mm -hmm. But that's going to change my lifestyle. and I mean, it starts snowballing yeah. Yeah, and as then, to what's uh, happening. And you start tunneling, and then you get deeper and deeper in this darker depression, Yeah, and you get deeper and deeper into this, like I call a tunnel, a black hole, where there's no top. You can't get out. Uh -huh. And so now they are like, we're like, wow. 
So it skyrocketed to people like, yeah, I'm suffering. Mm -hmm. I'm suffering from depression and I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. And while people think that psychiatrists, all they do is throw medicine at you, I think that was back in the day, yeah. right? So I tell my physician all the time, where like, you know, I go on our unit, I'm like, people are, I'm like, this is the most active psychiatric behavioral unit. And people are like, oh, it's an insane asylum. No, it's not. I'm like, can you give some more medicine? Mm -hmm. But it's not about, we want them to cope. We want yeah. them to still be able to function. Yeah. And so they're like putting on the bare minimum of medication to just function, right. to get to a baseline, right? Um, so <clears throat> it's not about throwing medicine at people. Some psychiatrists or people, therapists, they may do that, but I think it's just, they need to be heard. Mm. People, just, some people just, people just want to talk. Well, and I think for so long, you know, you, you talk about an insane asylum. I think about one flew over the cuckoo's nest. I mean, that's what comes to my head. Yeah. And, you is, know, it's, that's funny that you said that. Like, some people, they will not come. They were like, oh, I, uh, -uh that's an insane asylum. There's yeah. straight jackets. There's white Because that's walls. what you think of. That's what you think. Complete opposite. When yeah. I go in our unit, like, they are laid back in their recliners. Like, they're on a ship, on a crew. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Well, they're peaceful. And they're safe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We make an environment where they feel safe. They feel like people actually care. Yeah. Um, there's somebody there all the time watching after those loved ones, you know? And they, it's a relaxing, therapeutic environment, which that's what we want. Oceans is where your healing journey begins. Yeah. And it's, it's great. I love it. I love it. So do you need volunteers to help you with things? Um, or do you have to be trained? You definitely have to be trained. It's not like a, you know, where you can come over to our hospital and just say, hey, I want to volunteer. Right. It's not like that. What I would love is for some of the ministers in the area to come and volunteer yeah. to do like communion, mm -hmm. on, you know, um, and just do a Bible study. That would be great. Um, where I can see the volunteers come into play is for the suicide walk in September. Okay. Tell um, us about that. Yes. Yeah, so... You know, I tell people the Lord gives me things in awkward situations and positions. I was in the restroom and uh, just I think I just was doing hair or something. And we had had an uptick in suicide again. And I'm like, man, like these people have they feel hopeless. What can I do? You know, yeah. I don't want to just I'm the one. I don't want to just tell you the problems. I want to give you the solutions and help bring solutions. Mm -hmm. And you just do a suicide awareness walk. Like what? I'm, like, I'm only one person, right? I'm very resourceful sometimes. So I'm getting on the phone and I'm calling. I'm like, hey, what do y'all think? They're like, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm like, okay. So I got these room of attorneys, judges, healthcare, preachers, lawyers. I mean, it's great. And I was like, this is what I want to do. Police officers. I was like, can we do it? Absolutely. So September 23rd in the downtown Nacogdoches, we'll close it off at 5 p.m., um, and do a suicide awareness walk with nice. a concert. Um, I mean, and what's crazy, almost every person on that committee has been affected by suicide affected. in one way or the other. Right. You know, so it it's a personal touch. And is this them. a walk that goes all night long? No. Or, so okay. what it'll look like, it's only about... Because I know they have those. They do. Yeah. They do. So for this being the first one, I was like, let's not push the needle, right? So we'll start at the CVB downtown Nacogdoches. Okay. And we'll do like a little bit over a mile, but it'll go all and we'll come back and do like a concert. We'll have family share stories about their loved ones. Right. Um, we have performers come in to do a little concert. It's going to be great. But we also are doing a memorial garden at nice. the gazebo where it'll be like yard signs. Right. And it'll say, you know, it's OK to not be OK in honor of. Right. And those families can write that loved one's name in and then they'll be able to take that home with them. Nice. So we'll be able to walk by that and then come back. And it's I'm, I'm pretty excited because, you know, people after that, they don't they forget about the family. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're just trying to bring hope, let them know that their loved ones are not forgotten about. So, yeah, we definitely will need volunteers for that, for sure. And where can they contact you to find out how to we be have a Facebook page called Next Safe Place. Okay. Our Instagram is Next Safe Place. Okay. Um, but our web website is nextsafeplace.life. OK. Which I chose that domain because I'm like, this is what we want to promote yeah. is life. Great. Right? Yeah. So nextsafeplace.life and they can go there for more details. And that's sure. not just limited to anyone in academia. Oh, no, it's this is Lufkin, Lufkin, Lufkin County, East Texas, East Texas, Houston, Dallas. Dallas. I want to bring them all together because, yes, suicide is prominent in our East Texas, and it's 
it's a lot right now. It's a, but it's, it's everywhere. Yeah, I was watching the uh, news on Friday and saw a, a story about Dallas firefighters. Like they've had like four to six oh, wow. suicides since COVID, right? Mm. Um, so I'm trying to get in touch with the Dallas Firefighter Association. Say, hey, come stand with me. Yeah, you know, because again, it has no look. So many people think that depression and suicide are for people that look a certain standard. Absolutely not. Yeah, That's absolutely true. not. Well, it, we just appreciate all that you're doing for East Texas. I love Texas it, y'all. I love it. For your home. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For you sure. You can tell that the passion is very true. And, you know, I think that's the one thing that people just want to know how much you care. Not what you know, right? but how much you care. And they just want somebody there to stand with them. And that's that's what I'm going to do is stand with them. Right. For sure. Awesome. Well, if somebody needs help, how what number do they call? Who do they reach out to? If you are in immediate crisis... Again, 911, get to a hospital. But if you need, you know, you're like, I don't know what I need, call our office. Um, Ocean's Behavior right here on Gobbler's Knob. The number is 936-632-2276. And they will get you connected to to me, probably. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just put it out there. My cell number is 936-414-1707. Call me. I will walk you through that and be there with you. Yeah, for awesome. sure. For awesome. sure. Get you, you connected to the resources that they need. That's fantastic. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much for your time Absolutely. and, and your passion you. and coming on and sharing all this with us. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast this week. Uh, just remember, it's okay to not be okay. And That's if you need help, reach out to any of these resources that we've, we've talked about today. Thank you so much, and we will see you next week. Bye.